Duds and duds from the Avs 5-2 win over the Minnesota Wild in Game 79. At this point, you might as well call that first category Nathan McKinnon and other studs because that dude ain't leaving. Just another four-point night for McKinnon, his third hat trick of the season, breaching the 50-goal mark for the first time in his career, putting his total up to 137 points and 51 goals, because why not? He can just do that. Did I mention he had 10 shots on goal? Did I mention he did all of this in just 19 minutes of ice time? Pretty good. While McKinnon was the absolute true star of this hockey game, you also have to look at Kale McCarr putting up a three-point night, but more importantly than the actual production itself, Kale McCarr looked like the Kale McCarr that is a superstar. We've seen some ups and downs in Kale's game this season, at times showing some inability to finish, at times struggling on the defensive end. Yeah, we didn't see any of those things in this one. He notches his 20th goal of the season, sets a new career high in points, and maybe more importantly than all of that was his defensive metrics. In 14 minutes and 31 seconds of 5-on-5 five five ice time, Kale McCarr was on the ice for just two shots against. Then you have Arturi Lekkanen. Interesting, Lekkanen has become the reliable guy on the Avs power play. Consistently getting to the slot area and putting pucks into the back of the net for them on a power play that often feels all too ready to sit around the perimeter and take low percentage shots. Lekkanen is never going to wow you with superstar level talents, but he does the right things in the right areas and it's keeping the Avs steady on special teams. And the last individual is Jonathan Druin because that guy also set a career high in points in this game. Not just that, but has completely become a full-fledged top six player for the Avalanche. While he may not end up on the first line with a perfectly healthy Avs lineup on any given night, he's perfectly capable of playing there, and when he has confidence like he's got right now, he can compete with anyone. The Avs have a number of guys that are putting up career best seasons and you need those type of things if you want to go on a deep playoff run and beyond those specifics the abs as a whole deserve a lot of credit for their five on five play as a team they gave up a grand total of eight shots on goal at five on five and five of those came in the first period so they played 40 minutes of hockey with just three shots on goal at five on five against that is outrageously good defense and that does bring us to our one dud category of the game Penalties and penalty killing. The penalty kill was not good. You cannot give up multiple power play goals in a game and expect to win come playoff time. But it didn't really end up mattering in this game. And again, the penalty kill's having a quick little dip here, but on the whole, it's been really, really good over the last 10 to 15 games. And even across the season, they rank in the top 10 in the NHL. So not overly picky about that. What I am picky about is the bad penalties. Chris Wagner just tackles a guy in the neutral zone for no reason, and that's ultimately why the Avs don't win the first period. You need to be better than that. You just cannot take penalties like that. Nathan McKinnon yapping at the ref. Is it a dumb call? Maybe. I don't actually know what McKinnon said. But either way, just shut your mouth, and you don't get that called on you. It's not that hard. That's about it, though. If the Avs don't take stupid penalties, they played a near-perfect game. Lastly, the unsung hero of this one, Devon Taves, takes a stick to the face and bleeding heavily on the ice, returns fairly quickly, and goes plus three on the night. Not bad, huh? Oh, by the way, he also had two assists, too, so... On the whole, this game was a nice breather and reminder that the Avs do, in fact, be good. 